This training video offers a step-by-step -step demonstration of how to use a TruePulse 200X laser rangefinder with our new Pole Audit for OCalc app, a field data collection app for utilities and telecom professionals who use Osmos's OCalc Pro desktop software. Before heading out into the field, you will need to set up a configuration file for the project at hand. This file will dictate the equipment in use and the required measurements to be taken by the user when assessing poles. This requires the OCalc Pro software to be installed on your PC with the OCalc LE plugin included. In OCalc Pro, click on the Collection Configuration tab. Next, open the Configuration drop-down menu and choose the following options in this order. New Configuration, OCalc LE Configuration, with placeholders. This prompts the app to create a default configuration file. Now you can drag options from the Master tab, on the far left, and drop them into your configuration file. You can also click to highlight, and then delete, any unneeded elements in this default file. Once your fully customized configuration file has been tailored according to your project's needs, open the Configuration drop-down menu, and click Save Configuration As. Save the file to your PC. With the Pole Audit for OCalc Pro app installed on your Android tablet, establish a wired connection to your PC. Open your recently saved configuration file's location. Highlight the file and copy it. Next, look for your tablet on the file browser's far left side and click on it. Open your tablet's internal shared storage. From there, open the Android folder and then open the Data subfolder. Find and open the com.lasertech.polaudit underscore ocalc subfolder. From there, open the files and then data subfolders. This location is where you will paste the copied configuration file. Open the Pole Audit for OCalc app on your Android device. Performing the Plot Attachment Labels routine is optional and not required to create the output files for OCalc Pro. However, it does create a nice image of the pole and attachments. To turn this feature on, tap the three-dot icon in the app's top right corner, select Pole Audit Settings, and tap the Plot Attachment Labels checkbox. Follow the screen calibration procedure by dragging each plus sign to line up with the four X icons on the screen, then tap Save. Back at the main screen, tap New Project. Enter in a project name and enter your name as the inspector. Choose the project's configuration file from the drop-down menu and make sure to select the proper load case before adding any project notes. Tap Next to continue. This brings up a blank pull record. Occupy the utility pole's location. Tap the plus icon to start a new pole record. Tap the laser icon in the top right and select your True Pulse laser rangefinder from the drop down menu. The laser icon will turn green once the device is synced to your app. Next, tap the GPS icon in the top right. This first step activates your device's location services within the Pole Audit app. Enter in your antenna height before tapping close. Now tap the Location tab's GPS button. This second step records the utility pole's location. Tap Save to accept the pole's GPS location and a check mark will appear next to the GPS button. Start entering information for the street name, if applicable, and the pole ID. Use drop-down menus to select the proper values for pole type, pole material, and so on. The configuration file will determine which categories and options appear in this section of the pole record. Enter in the pole's circumference at ground level as your size GL value and finish entering any other at pole information that your configuration file requires. Relocate to a position that is about as far away from the pole as it is high. Use this location to finish populating the location tab with laser measurements. Tap the pole height icon and follow the graphic prompts to perform a three-shot routine with your True Pulse rangefinder. Shot 1 records a base angle. Aim the laser at the utility pole's base and press the fire button. 
the app automatically advances to the next prompt after shot 1 is recorded. Shot 2 records a horizontal distance. Aim the laser anywhere on the pole with a clear line of sight and press the fire button. Shot 3 records a top angle. Aim the laser at the top of the utility pole and press the fire button. The joint pole app auto-calculates the pole height. Tapping the cancel button wipes away these measurements and returns you to the pole tab with pole height left blank. Tapping reshoot will allow you to retake shots if you feel that the pole height accuracy can be improved. Tapping save will return you to the pole tab with this pole height value included. Next record the pole's lean value by tapping the lean icon. For best practices, set up at a location that reveals the pole's full lean angling up and away from you so that you can record an accurate direction as well. Use the graphic prompts to perform a two-shot routine with your true pulse rangefinder. For shot one, aim the laser at the pole's lowest location where the lean begins, then press the fire button. For shot two, aim the laser at the highest point where the pole's lean ends, then press the fire button. The joint pole app will auto-calculate the pole's lean and measure the direction with your device's compass. Tap on the Bayes tab. Here you can record two distance values relative to the current utility pole. The front bay records the distance and direction to the next pole on the front side of the line. Back bay is the distance and direction to the next pole on the back side. For this example, we'll occupy the current utility pole's location and tap the front option. Here are some details to keep in mind when recording your bay values. If the distance option is selected, your True Pulse 200X laser rangefinder will record horizontal distance values only. If the direction option is selected, your Android device's compass will record direction values only. If the both option is selected, both tools will work together to record horizontal distance and compass direction values. We'll choose the distance measurement option, tap the laser icon, and aim the laser at the pole towards the front side. Press the fire button. Next, pivot to face the opposite direction and repeat this process to record your back bay value. Note that you must specify at least one bay per pole and you can add or delete bays as needed. On the attachments tab, tap the plus icon in the bottom right to add a new attachment height to your pole record. Your configuration file will determine what options are available here. For this example, we'll add a COM span to our attachment list. Use the drop down menus to change any default values as needed, and use the span bays checkboxes to indicate which bay this attachment belongs to. Note that at least one bay must be selected. Once ready to measure, tap the height icon and follow the graphic prompts. Our example calls for a one shot routine. Just aim the laser at the wire's connection point and press the fire button. Tap save to accept the displayed attachment height value and tap save a second time to add this attachment height to your record. Continue these processes until all of your project's attachment heights have been added to the pull record. Use the notes tab to begin adding any final details to the utility pulls record. Any project note you entered during the new project setup will carry over to this section. Use the Pole Notes section to add new information that is specific to the current utility pole. Your configuration file will make checkbox options available under the Pole and Issues sections. Mark these according to the pole's condition. You can also use this section to record mid-span sag. To do so, tap the mid-span sag icon and follow the graphic prompts to perform a two-shot routine that will determine the wire's clearance value. Use the Photo tab to add a visual reference to your report. Tap the camera icon to take a picture of the utility pole. If you've chosen to overlay the attachment labels on the image, drag the crosshairs up to line up with the pole's top and base, then tap the checkmark icon. Your recorded attachment heights should appear on the picture close to their actual locations. Tap on any attachment height label, then use the up and down arrows to adjust its position as needed. Tap the back arrow in the app's top left corner to display the pull list, and at the top right you will see the reports icon. The ocalc.lcanx pull files will be automatically generated and shown in this list. 
There are other report formats available, if needed, under the Report Format drop-down menu. Tap the email icon to send your pull files via email. Tap the Include Photos checkbox if you utilize to the Pulls Photo tab. The file name will carry over from your project setup, but can be changed here if needed. Enter in the recipient address and send your report. Back on your computer, download and save the emailed report files in a convenient location. Then open the OCalc Pro app. Click Tools and choose the Import Collected Poll option, then Select Configurations. Find and select the configuration file that was set up for this project and click Open. Next, tap Tools and Import Collected Poll once more, then select the Import Analysis option. Find and select the appropriate poll file and click Open. You can now save your OCalc file with the poll audit information included.